you need to be um, very understanding of the perspective of, of the musicians from the orchestra. Because they don't play for you, they play with you, and I think that makes a huge difference. Good, so we are in Zurich right now, still uh, in one of my favorite spots in the city. I came here already more than four years ago when I was uh, 21 still. It was the first time I lived somewhere else than, than home. I came directly from Chile, from Santiago to Zurich. Of course, it's a very different culture, it's a different language. I, I, I didn't speak any German. I spoke English very badly also. So it took a little bit of time. It took like, let's say, half a year or a whole year that I could start feeling at home. I don't have my family here because they're only in Chile. I, I have found really good friends and people who really support me and that I know that they're going to be there always. Keep it a little nicer. Not too, not too much, too much. There is not for Sato, actually, it's just a little louder. So we're in the Zurich University of Arts, in the terrace of the Zurich University of Arts, as you can see, because we have a project this week where I'm conducting two pieces of my favorite composer, who's Gustav Mahler. I somehow tend to think that his music goes pretty the closest to the essence of the human soul. I mean, if, if it has to be sad, it's extremely sad. It doesn't matter how the quality or how the texture of the music is. It's he's slowly going away from the rules somehow. He's just basing his music much more in what he wants to say. And I'm pretty sure he also wants the people to feel exactly as how he felt. Most of the players are really good friends of mine. Uh, and we are very close and uh, they, they, I, I feel extremely grateful that they just accept to play and to take part of this project and that we can get together and make some music and even have a concert. I mean, it's just, it's, it's awesome, honestly. Yeah, I made it long ago. Oh, shit. We should go ask Luis. Are you going to ask Luis? Yes. <laughs> Luis, ¿nosotros cómo nos conocimos? Well, I don't remember. That's the first thing. <laughs> but I think it was probably drinking somewhere after a concert. Well, he asked me to play for him in a special project or something. Then, you know, that's how, how good relationships begin. Drinking after concerts together and actually just to go out together as well. Yeah, during Corona somehow we also decided that he will be my new flatmate. And he is now my new flatmate. <laughs> I think the role of, a, of the conductor today has changed really a lot if we compare it to, let's say, 100 years ago. I don't think nowadays it's possible to have this very tyrant kind of conductor, you know, like, like also that kind of personality to rehearse because it's just, it's not how it works anymore. And it would be stupid, in my opinion, to think that that's still how it works because the conductor doesn't make the music happen, the musicians make the music happen. That's why I don't like so much the word conducting them. I know what I'm supposed to play, I know how, to, how I want to phrase it, and maybe he comes and fits it more into a bigger picture, so it's not really he just dictates me how to do it. And actually I think musicians like that, because many times they have conductors that they really don't care about what the musicians think. What we do uh, today with the ensemble in the afternoon, that is our practical part, where every conductor can try out his view of the piece, his vision of how he wants to, to do it, how it works technically, where we maybe have to find something else or to develop something else. I do think that you have to be completely sure about what you want. You need to learn a lot, you need to study a lot. There are so much things to learn in life, so much things to experience in life, also in arts, you know, in every type of art. And I think it's, it's, it's a kind of background that really, really increases your, your, your understanding of the music. I actually feel proud when I see him in front of me conducting. He's being, I mean, when he shows how intelligent, how musical he is, because, I mean, he's so natural, such a natural musician, such a natural person. It's, it's very interesting that he is 
someone who can can have a very good control with a body language in the hands that seems very kind of fluent and kind of soft, but it's very strong and very, very clear. And, and that, that's interesting. Yeah, you have others who are, are much, who are much wilder, so to speak, but on the other hand, less effective to really get the, the sound and, and the, the orchestra very close to his hands. Although I don't practice the violin often anymore and I somehow I really dedicate most of the time to conducting, I, it, it, it's always like coming to the basis again. Because when you, unfortunately, when you conduct, you don't have your own sound. It is like that. The musicians make their own sound. And when you have the instruments, the instrument in your hands, it's completely different because then you are really responsible and you can care for the sound. You really produce it physically yourself. In like, like having the interaction with friends especially and playing chamber music, it's just, I think it's amazing and it's, it's a sort of coming back to earth a little bit and just making music from the very inside part of the music process somehow. <laughs> So uh, we're in Salzburg now because we are in the finals now of the Herbert von Tara Young Young Conductors Award and uh, I've been lucky enough to make it to the final so far. So we have this um, Chilean piece called Canción de Cuna para Fuella Basket by Thomas Brandmeier about the story of a little girl from the very south of Chile. She was brought to England and uh, she learned the language and she learned of course about the culture and she came back to to, the, to Chile, then she was somehow rejected by her own culture because they were seeing her as a foreigner. This, this standing in the middle of two different words, but not really knowing where you actually belong to, I think that's, that's very much connected to what happens today, I think for every human being, and especially, especially in Chile. After two or three years that, has been, that have been incredibly complicated because of the political situation, I think Chile is now in a period where we are looking for our own identity, looking for um, conditions that are more equal for our society. So it is very touching also in that sense to, to have the feeling that I want to be there because of course I miss many things, but somehow I, I've been in this part of the world. Luis, of course, is the not so typical, but still South American energy character. He, he can be very decisive and very strong, but he also is, is a kind of a, a soft thinker at the same time. So I, I find this very uh, interesting with his personality. He, he can have very much both sides. I do try to uh, live every day of my life knowing that life is not about music. Music is about life, but it's not the other way around. And I think that enriches the music process when you conduct and you think of life and you reflect life in the music you are playing. But I think it's also quite dangerous to think that, that everything we have is music because that is not true, you know. If, if, if I'm ever, let's say, if I'm ever super sad, I'm probably gonna call, I don't know, my parents or I'm gonna call a friend to talk. I'm not gonna listen to a symphony to feel better. I, I, that's me, I don't know, it's, it's how I see it. And I think it's also much more refreshing because music is so intense and so deep and so profound that, that I think we should somehow enjoy it as for, for what it is, which is a fantastic, life-changing, process sometimes when you have a great concert of course it's life changing and i really think the the, the the grace of music is that it's timeless somehow you know because in the very moment that you produce a sound it's already gone you cannot hold to it and it is like that and i think that's why a, a great concert it can be so touching because you know it cannot last. And you know, you just had a moment that it cannot repeat itself again. 
But life is not like that, you know. Life in life, you have time actually for many things, and you have time to enjoy things. You know, I, there is a, there is a wonderful quote that I saw once in a documentary with Michael Kilson Thomas talking about Mala, and he says something like, "Beauty makes us cry because we fear it cannot last," and I think that's 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 just that's just it about music. I, I think it's really like that. Oh,